year-end investment ideas and tax strategies. First thing Monday morning I'm going to march into my boss's office and demand a pay cut so that I'll be in a lower tax bracket next year. Of course that's ridiculous, but isn't it about the same as the financial community's conventional wisdom for year-end tax planning? What about the long-term nature of investing, or the merits of that investment they felt so strongly about in July? What are their motivations, and what discipline thought of these strategies in the first place? Clearly there are many questions that require answers, but as investors, it should be crystal clear that the object of the investment exercise is to make money, just as much as possible, quickly, legally, and within a low-risk environment. The faster it comes in, the more effectively it can be compounded. Wouldn't zero taxable gain investing be the only smart investment strategy? ADS Ember, 2004 New York Times Money Section article actually suggested that investment professionals had an obligation to lose money for clients in order to reduce the tax burden. Your financial professional's perspective may produce smart tax advice, but only professional investors should be called upon for acceptable investment advice. CPAs may look smarter if you have a lower tax liability, but many of them go too far with a calendar year focus that ignores the realities of an emotional and cyclical investment environment. Take last year's Merck, for example. Fortunately, not all professionals are into losing money. In fact, in nearly 30 years of dealing with hundreds of accountants and other advisors, not even a handful have suggested that clients should take losses on fundamentally sound securities, equity or fixed income. Just think if you had taken your dot dot com profits in 99, purchased the downtrodden profit making companies of the time, and paid the ugly taxes. The value companies didn't crash. Income securities whose payout has fallen away below average could also be called an ATH. Securities that have fallen considerably in market value for no apparent reason are referred to lovingly as investment opportunities. This is what I look for while trying to reinvest your profits, like last year's MRK. By the way, switching from the strong asset class to the weaker one is a hedging strategy or vice versa is simply an attempt at market timing, not a sophisticated or savvy adjustment to your asset allocation. Management of your portfolio requires the disciplined application of consistent rules and guidelines, and every manager will develop his or her own style. But in a high quality, properly diversified, income generating portfolio, the number of weak issues will generally be small and the probability of escaping with only a minimal loss very real. Keep in mind two basic investment axioms. There is no such thing as a bad profit, regardless of the tax implications. And no matter how you rationalize, there is no such thing as a good loss. So, sure, if a loss should be taken due to an ATH in February, buy the bullet on the one security with the declining fundamentals if there are none, good job. Profits are the holy grail of investing. Surely, speak of the CW profits, these profits will hang around until next year, thus deferring those terrible taxes. Don't think for a moment that anyone knows what will happen this time around a rally pole, particularly in those ridiculously priced EDFs, which are put together with the same kind of spit and duct tape used for the dot dot coms. Always take your profits too soon, because you can't get poor that way. First thing Monday morning I'm going to call my accountant and tell him that I'm going to help him reduce his tax burden by not paying him, continue to view the investment process in cyclical rather than calendar terms, limit my tax liability by how I invest, not by taking unnecessary losses, continue to make as much money as possible, as quickly and safely as possible, and contact the media, my political representatives, and anyone else I can think of that will help in the fight to abolish the taxation of all investment and retirement income.